All right, part two of this same snippet of the Tocatina by Kapustin, measure one. So if you haven't watched that first part, you might as well do it. But for right now, I'll jump right to where I left off, which is I did some practice on that very specific snippet. And there it is. Just that single note is the start of my practice. It's my goal. And I play it like this, and that's what you see highlighted in red. But you also have to do any position shifts, so I'm actually going to highlight that as well. Right here. So that little red square tells me to do this rather than just that. Right? So in position with minimal effort, just Focus on doing the one thing and do it as well as you can. So that's my approach to start in practice. Establish the goal, figure it out, make sure it all makes sense. Now, right hand as well. It's about to play that chord. Well, I'll reveal it briefly, right? That right hand chord. And uh, it seems like 5 4 is fine. Yeah? So. I need to prepare it actually, and I do have that, you know, pencil scanned in uh, graphic that you can kind of see, but let's go ahead and actually put in a proper graphic here. Yeah, so that position needs to be in place like that. Okay, so now I'm in, bo both hands are in position. All I'm doing is this. It's the last eighth note of a fast pulse. Okay, once that's been established, I go back and I do this. So I'm holding this with. Actually, might as well do it this way first. I'm Holding these down, I just press them down, and then I'm paused in pause mode. And then, well, All right, so I need to minimize any extraneous motion from any part of my body. Now, also, usually I would sit down right here, centered on E middle E. I call it E5. Some people call it E4. I actually want to be centered right here. Now I'm in performance. I'll just kind of roll over my right hip. But when I'm practicing just to avoid straining my lower back, I literally scoot over. So I, I know I, I'm centered in the right place, but I'm not trying to, you know, kind of J shape my back to, to get there. All right. And by the way, I don't see that B pointed out in my notes, so I'm actually going to go ahead and add that to my notes. You can kind of see in my pen, scanned in pencil that I wrote G6, which is kind of ridiculous. This is like, I don't think that's necessary at all. Ah, I know why I did that, because of what's coming up. Well. When that when it does come up and I have to actually be further to my right, then I'll move to G6. But at the beginning, B5 is fine, so I will um, white out this old scribble and go ahead and tell myself to put in torso at B5. Okay, you can kind of see it there, obscured by my covers. Okay, so that's done. Very good. Now we go back to practicing. So I'm, I'm centered on B6. I've got my hands in position. I've just played that chord that's half covered. And I'm working on doing nothing but this. Right? Getting, in other words, coming out of holding this chord. I have to release it, obviously. I have to strike that red highlighted bottom G with the accent and then I have to reposition my hands right 
to where they need to be for what's coming up. So that's what I'm working on, nothing else. Still feels like I'm doing too much of something. Right. I'm going to watch my hands right now. Right, so there's obviously some effort that's required from my fifth finger in the left hand. Okay, let's just say it's good enough for now. Now I will re reveal that chord fully and I'll actually strike it. So my uh, left hand will be positioning both fingers one and two on this G key, so I'm not yet ready to strike this bottom G. That will only happen as I get to that G that's been revealed and so what I'm going to do is put you can kind of see it again as a scribble from my old days when I was working on this the first time and I'll go ahead and put that red positioning square right underneath this G but to begin with this is my position one two three I decided for this chord so Right. So there was a perfect example of what to practice. I extended, but somehow did not attain enough strike force to take care of that red highlight. So one more time. Right. A little sluggish on repositioning my right hand, so let's get that right. Keep the posture upright. It was okay, but not enough accent. That has to be perfectly together. Okay, let's just say that's good enough for right now. It certainly feels a little more secure than it was yesterday. All right, then the previous step would be to do that chord, which is holding that G with finger two, holding this with one, two, five, Having my thumb is ready to strike the G again. Three is on top of B, like I've got all those things ready. So I, all I have to do is do what I just did half a minute ago. Like that. One more time, I'm holding it down. All I have to do is that thing I've already practiced. No, I missed. Okay. A little bit on something. Okay, let's just say that's good enough. And now play all three of these rhythmic units, three eighth notes. Keep the posture upright, look at the hands. So it sounds okay, but I feel that part is a little too loud and the accent is not strong enough. Now this was too loud. Again, I'm not sure how easy it is to hear on through the microphones, but and also I think YouTube doesn't quite preserve the um, the dynamic levels. I, I'm not sure at least. I have to work on that, download my videos and then check to see if the audio is still good. Something like that. One more time. Still doesn't feel quite together. One more time. It's kind of there, but still like last time, it's not quite there yet. A little better. Uh, one more time. No. <laughs> Actually curious about something. Now, I just played this snippet right here. And what you're seeing, if you can see it, yeah, you can kind of see it. 
there. So it's a really zoomed in view of the notes I just played. And it shows very many problems. So my first chord, this one, yeah, you see these four rectangles. Well, if I played it perfectly together, all rectangles would line up together. They would begin at the exact same time, right? That vertical, thin vertical line is kind of my time slice. So this is the instant moment. And so, no, they're not together. The, the top note of the right hand is the first one. That makes sense. Loud notes are usually the, the first ones. Then the bottom note, that cyan highlighted, cyan colored note, is the last one. And that's usually the case for um, all the weaker sounding notes, because we kind of bring the key down slower so as to play it um, not as loudly. And of course, being slower, it's also delayed in time. Again, we're talking about milliseconds, but still. What I'm more concerned about is that my left hand is not exactly together, just like that. So for instance, hmm, how should I do it? But yeah, it, be, before, I, before I get into my uh, technical stuff, um, notice what's going on with the second chord, which is pathetic. Look, I only play a single right hand note, right? I didn't even strike these lower two notes of my chord. St again, the, the two hands are not quite together. And then of course, finally, there is this, uh, my b bottom G that I played with finger five. All right, let's, let, let's keep going here. Uh, yeah, so, so to get it really perfect is hard. <laughs> and I don't, again, want to make these, uh, practice sessions on specific snippets too long. Uh, again, they go quicker if I don't pause to explain everything I do. But it's the kind of thing, as I said last time, that I keep zooming in on the problem. I keep thinking about it. I keep thinking, okay, I can do better. Focus on what I'm guessing. Just that, right? So let's, let's look at that. Where is this? There it is. Uh huh. There. It is. So see, now I focused on just getting those notes more together, and you can see that the the left hand and the right hand notes I actually played. I overcompensated. <laughs> I played that bottom note of my left hand a little before the right. So anyway, you focus. You identify what the problem is. You don't need these visuals to do it. Usually your ear and your body tells you something is wrong. But I think for the video, this is kind of nice to see. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And I'll just do part three another day.